This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. We have another weather impact alert this evening. For days now, the Bi State has been dealing with extreme heat and humidity. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Kelly Jackson. We also have a chance for some showers and storms tonight and tomorrow. Meteorologist Jim Castillo is here with the forecast, Jim. Yeah, we're doing it again, guys. 98 for that high today. And then storms did pop up in North St. Louis County around Jennings and also into uh, St. Charles County, really the eastern portion. But now those have collapsed. But earlier, a wind gust of 53 miles an hour at Smart Field, uh, kind of as these things dissipated and, and they really collapse upon themselves. Uh, so that's what we're seeing, these pulsating up around Macoupin County in Illinois. And again, most of these sub-severe are below severe limits, but still some heavy rain and some lightning with those. And at Lambert, we were at 98, we dropped to 92. Still some thunder within the area, or at least we did in the last hour. And of course, that overnight low of 76, a northeast wind at about seven miles an hour. So there's that cluster of storms. Again, really just a few of them out there tonight. But we do have showers and storms likely with a cold front coming our way later tomorrow afternoon and evening. And some of them may be severe. Again, an isolated risk of that. We'll talk about this coming up in Maine weather in just a few minutes, plus a big cool down, guys. All right, Jim, thanks. Now to a developing story out of North St. Louis, where a plant is closed down after explosions in a sewer line this afternoon. Megan Kernan joins us live from the scene on Grand. What's the latest, Megan? Well, Kelly and Mike, about an hour ago, Fire Chief Dennis Jankerson confirmed to us that there were a total of five or six explosions that happened behind the Procter & Gamble parking lot. Now, that was in a construction area. Thankfully, he says that there were no injuries and everybody was able to evacuate the building safely. Now, the plant is closed down for the for the day. The first calls came around 1245 this afternoon. Fire crews got a report of a small explosion in the area of East Grand and Ferry. The first emergency crews on scene saw multiple manhole covers blown off. Chief Jenkerson says it turns out it was related to the MH MSD system. He says initial readings gave first responders some very high explosive limits and a couple more manhole lids blew off after that. Now we talked to one employee who says there was an odor in the building and then all of a sudden she heard an explosion. The employees said they were all told to get their stuff and evacuate out of the building. Chief Jenkerson says it's been about three hours since the last explosion. It was some type of um a flammable type material uh, it hasn't been identified yet. It was probably a mixture. Um, so we're starting to bring the levels down at this time. We're, we're flushing about a four square block area, but we have to be concerned with how we flush it because some of the source systems run directly into the treatment plant. And if uh, some of these products get into there, it, it messes up how they treat the raw storage. Now, fire and police crews are still investigating, as you just heard, so they're still asking people to avoid this area right now. Now, we'll bring you the latest on air and online as soon as we get more information and tonight at 6. Live in North St. Louis, Megan Kernan, 5 on your side. Tonight, a big problem for independent small pharmacies. The Drug Enforcement Administration believes thieves are targeting businesses out of greed. The federal agency says the goal for criminals to get their hands on controlled substances. And our Justina Coronel joins us in the newsroom with more information. Justina. Well, Mike and Kelly, just today in the Metro East, a suspect named George Cunningham was sentenced to more than eight years in prison for burglary involving controlled substances and distributing narcotics. Now, according to the DEA, his accomplice, Tarvin Hamler, was sentenced to 96 months. Now, this is just one pair of thieves the United States District Court has been tracking in connection to small pharmacy burglary. The two were charged for distributing oxycodone, hydrocodone, and morphine. Now, focused on this case, documents said the duo targeted eight pharmacies from Indiana to Illinois to Missouri, and one of those targets was Ledoux Pharmacy. However, nothing was taken. Today, we spoke to the owner, Rick Williams, said their family-owned business has seen its fair share of break-ins in the worst case in 2001 when they were wiped out clean. That's why he's made changes. We've completely revamped our security systems, and so it's uh, much more challenging for somebody to get, get away with anything. Everything that you hear about with what's happening with drug abuse and, and people who are attempting to get 
narcotics in any way that they can. So it's clearly something that's front of mind. The DEA admits this is a national issue and a trend. Just in 2023, nearly 900 burglaries at independent pharmacies involving theft of controlled substances were reported across the country. Tonight, St. Louis County specialists will set a handful of mosquito traps. The nightly process helps calculate the risk for mosquito-borne illnesses like the West Nile virus in St. Louis. Tracy Henson got an inside look it's a painstaking process, right, Tracy? Oh gosh, it really is. So when the traps are brought back to the lab, the mosquitoes are frozen and then counted by hand. So the map here shows you where in St. Louis County they've collected mosquitoes. Health department teams go out at night, set traps, and then bring what they've captured to the lab. The winged insects are then counted, put in tubes, frozen, and tested. Specialists do a PCR test on the mosquitoes, like what we would get for a flu or COVID, but for insect-borne diseases. We test for West Nile in addition to St. Louis encephalitis and Eastern equine encephalitis. Um, and typically throughout the mosquito season, there's really not much West Nile at the beginning of the year, but by about this time of the year, we see it pretty much everywhere throughout St. Louis County. In mosquitoes, that is, human cases are more rare. I asked what the differences look like from year to year. He said years with flooding are always worse, but this year's populations have been high due to varied rainfall, kind of like what we saw today. Now I'll have the steps you can take to protect yourself tonight at 6. Tracy, thanks. Well, the Cardinals are back in action today at Bush, and once again, tickets were reselling on StubHub for zero dollars. Hard to believe. Five in your side, Holden Kerwicki is live outside Bush Stadium. What about those cheap tickets? Do you see any more fans? Well, Kelly, Mike, I actually spoke with multiple team sources today who told me that an hour after first pitch, the attendance inside the stadium was around 11,000 fans. Now, that doesn't reflect the number of tickets sold. That was around 26,000. But for the vendors outside of Bush, they tell me either way you look at it, it's bad for business. For the past 26 years, Karen Boshert, affectionately named as, or known as the hot dog lady, has been selling concessions outside of Cardinals games, and she told me she's never seen this few fans at the ballpark. She lost $40,000 last year as the team struggled to a last place finish, but came back in 2024 due to the renewed optimism around the club that has since faded along with the team's playoff hopes. Are you breaking even most no. days? Or? losing but we're trying to do it because we have faith that the Cardinals will come back and I love being the hot dog lady and but it gets harder and harder to set up and I've cut my staff down and I mean my prices are reasonable you can take everything into the stadium. Boshard admitted to me that she has considered closing her stands down coming up at six o'clock hear from some baseball insiders why things around the stadium are really just bad for business as the team struggles and it could impact things over at Ballpark Village. Reporting live outside of Bush Stadium, Holden Kerwicki, five on your side. A listeria outbreak tied to Boar's Head Deli Meat is growing. Tonight, we are learning about safety violations at the plant behind the outbreak. Israel and Hamas agreed to a pause in fighting in Gaza, but it has nothing to do with the recent war negotiations. He's a Paralympian competing in Paris, the legacy he hopes to leave behind for future athletes. Hey everyone, Michelle Lee here. You know, it is Labor Day weekend and that means many of you will be hitting the roads and the skies. So we're going to take a look at the worst times to drive during the holiday and why airfare might be the cheapest it's been in years, even with inflation. That is tomorrow on Today in St. Louis at 6 a.m.